I'm telling you, nothing like waking up with a power with a cup of this stuff. That's a fact. Welcome. Good morning. Another episode of Psycho Splatter is always powered by coffee each and every time. Thought I'd do a very, very short morning one. Yeah, that's right. I know maybe nobody's around or maybe you guys are doing something else, and that's quite all right, too. This was just going to be a little bit of a gib gab fest for about 30, 45 minutes. Nothing fantastic. I hope everybody's kind of doing real good out there today, of course, being the 9th of April. Uh, Tuesday morning, if you will. I hope everybody had themselves a good weekend. Saturday, I was going to originally do a broadcast, and I just wasn't really feeling really good. I'm still planning on doing a broadcast tomorrow, but I still am trying to get that computer set up so we can do things differently from now on. But until then, I thought I'd plop on here like this on the tablet. And uh, like I said, uh, hopefully everybody's... Uh, having some fun here get yourself some coffee or tea and and uh i got little oreos here on the side here for myself not that i need them this morning but whatever so two people managed to survive the great eclipse of 2024 we got to uh watch it for a few minutes and actually it was quite interesting it did not get to 100 percent totality over where i was at in arkansas but i'd say it was about a good 95 percent uh and that was the most i that's the most I ever saw on something like that i remember in 2017 it didn't get that big or go across um like it did this time around so not that it matters but for any of you science chunkies uh, if I remember correctly, the next uh, eclipse will be in April 2044. See, I can't even think that far. I'll probably be dead by then. But if you live in Canada or Montana and North Dakota, you'll get to see that one. Uh, the rest of the U.S. will not. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Because if I remember correctly, the next one, that we will have of this type of uh, proportion, if you will. 2061, that's a long way away. I'd be 94. I, I hope I'm not around by 2061. That's all I'm saying. But good morning to the three people I've got here. I know, I know. Psycho normally doesn't do these in the morning, or he's on with uh, with Joe, you know, on Mayo's Movie Man. Uh, but he doesn't do them on Tuesday mornings. He does... Uh, the catch-up things on Tuesday night. So that's why I figure, hey, once in a while on a Tuesday morning, you'll see my ugly ass uh, before you start your work day. You know, I may not be no wacky morning zoo on a radio. Do you remember at, like, wherever you lived, okay, out there, BC land, do you remember, like, whatever was your go-to morning radio uh, show that you would listen to to get some laughs or some stupid shit or whatever. You know, being in Chicagoland originally, see, there isn't really anything down here in Northwest Arkansas anymore. Uh, I used to listen to this pair named John and Deke is their names. They're still around. It's just, um, I don't know where they're at. They, they moved around the dial all over the place, and I, I don't even know if they're still on air, but they were um, when I came here 17 years ago but uh glenn how are you yes how's how's it going glenn how are you I, i'm trying my voice is almost back my voice is almost back like i was mentioning i thought i would just do like a 30 45 minute fill in here before uh before uh the rg show comes on at eight but yeah i mean <clears throat> if you guys are seeing this now or you're seeing this in the replay Put in the comments, like, what was what was the morning radio show that you listened to when you were growing up, or even now, for that matter, if they're decent? Because usually every, every you know, major market or even media market had a wacky morning zoo, and I'm just like, oh, no. Sometimes I could put up with it, and sometimes I couldn't. That's all there was to it. When I was a kid, 
I grew up in Chicagoland, and so we pretty much had WLS or Super CFL, at least through the 70s, okay? So in the mornings would be Larry Lujak. I miss Larry Lujak. Super jock. Larry Lujak, Larry Lujak. I mean, he, would, he, was, he was snarky and fun at the same time. And, of course, later on, he would pair up with... Uh, Little snot nosed Tommy, <laughs> Tommy Edwards, uh, and do animal stories. If you remember that, uh, oh God, those animal stories were funny. I, I have a couple of those albums. They made they made some on vinyl. I think they made six different ones on vinyl. I've got two. I wouldn't mind finding the rest of them because uh, yeah, Uncle Larry, he's dead. He died a few years ago. And then in the eighties, I guess. Uh, what the heck. In the 80s, I don't really, I mean, I know Larry was still around in the early 80s anyway, but then after that, by the time I got out of high school, there wasn't any of that stuff. I, it was just like music shows, but by then, you know, I'd listen to the, listen to the loop, AM 1000, and, uh, and then by the 90s, they, uh, they started having people, and uh, one of my, I mean, Jonathan Brandmeier, my God, he was on forever, it seemed like, it seemed that way anyway. And Brandmeier's shtick, he's okay, but it kind of grows thin after a little while, in my opinion, anyway. That's not a knock against John, but, you know, you only can do so many tricks the same amount of times, you know, to the same amount of listeners, you know what I'm saying? And he was going at it since the 80s. He stopped. Uh, he actually he actually came back to Chicago uh, up until the time the loop died the loop fm is dead it's been dead a couple years now even man cow was on there remember man cow in the morning now man cow uh in the 2000s well late 90s 2000s i listened to him a little bit in the mornings sometimes i actually knew somebody a dear friend of mine for a while worked on that staff uh she's on the first cd he ever did i'm um, just like going you know she she mentioned a little behind the scenes and such but Man, Kyle, he's just, he's, boy, he's out there. Uh, but, uh, and then Bob and Tom, of course, but Bob retired, and the show wasn't as fun anymore uh, after that. It really wasn't, but, you know, I like Bob and Tom. They came up with some silly stuff. You know, they'd have, uh, they'd have those parody songs or, or uh, smoking, smoking in front of the building or, uh, you know, any of those other things or, one of my one of my favorite side characters in that show was a guy who no longer is around, rest in peace. But his name was Donnie Baker. Now Donnie Baker, oh my God! If you can like turn to the dictionary of the trailer park trash, you would find Donnie Baker's picture over there, along with a bag of Funyuns and a three liter bottle of Mountain Dew. He always used to say he had that, right? And he kind of talked like this. I can't do it real good today, but he he would turn around and go to his boss because he'd call in Bob and Tom and he'd go, shut up, Randy, you fag. <laughs> yeah, that's what he would do. And I'm like going, oh, my God. I'm like, all right, whatever. And um, But, yeah, I got the, you know, he's gone too. He died. But, uh, and we won't even talk about Stern, okay? I mean, Stern, ever since he went to uh, satellite, whatever, I, I, you know, I, I remember this much, and this made me laugh, okay, so Chicago is a very fickle audience, it really, really is, they, tr I cannot remember who on, on the loop left, they left, who the hell was it, I can't quite remember, I'm sorry, but they put Howard Stern show, all right, so this is early 90s, they, they tried putting him in, oh, I remember now, for, for some dumb reason, David Lee Roth had his show, if you barely remember that, I, I, I don't, I didn't get to hear it, but Chicago had it for about a month, and then they pulled the plug on that, and then they were like, well, what the hell are we going to do? They bring in Stern, okay, and that went over like a lead balloon because nobody liked it, nobody listened to it, and and I'm going to confess, 
I maybe listened to it once or twice, and I didn't even think it was that funny. I really didn't, okay? And uh, and so he didn't last real long either. He was supposed to even have a two-year contract with that radio station, and he was gone within 60 days. I'm calling, man, oh, man. The same thing with um, with Bob and Tom. They went did a did in Chicago. They couldn't go over there. You know, it's not, you know, I don't understand how to explain it, but every market's different. You know, every market appears to be different. And it's like certain things work with certain audiences. And, you know, it's almost like a, it's like a roll of the dice when you're in radio. I, are you going to get over? I mean, mornings to me are a bigger pressure than the rest of the damn day. I know that uh, when I, you know, and even in the last decade or so, I've had people go, hey, Paul, why don't you do that stuff? You know what? Maybe I could have done it 10, 15 years ago. I couldn't do it now. I'm, I, I need other people to, to help me be funny. Speaking of this guy here, this guy. <laughs> oh, Willie, what's, what's going on with you, huh? Um, but, I mean, because I had a buddy of mine named Eric. Uh, that worked with me, and he always was like, we ought to have like a morning zoo type thing. I'm going, Eric, we would need at least a handful of people, like four to five people minimum, I said, because I, you know, I couldn't carry the load by myself. I said the load. And I was just, I mean, I'm not, I'm not as funny as I used to be, okay? Yeah, I used to be funny about 10, 15 years back. I was, I was way out there, you know, no filter, no boundaries. I still, I guess, I'm like that sometimes. And uh, you know what? I'm in my mid fifties, damn it! I can get away with it now. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, you're snowflake. You're offended. Too bad. <laughs> I, I'm, I'll be. I got one foot in the grave anyway. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> what an attitude, right? What an attitude. I don't know. You know, though, Willie. Let's see. I watched your show. How about that? We'll talk about that for a bit. I know you're like, Psycho watched one of my episodes. I try, I try to watch people's shows when I've got time between being sick and, you know, having a lot of busyness here. <clears throat> I still haven't got that other computer set up. That's why we're doing this. Hopefully this will be the last broadcast like this. I hope. But, uh, Willie, I saw that show of yours and, uh, <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, the whole world is not against you, Willie. That's all I'm going to say. It, 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 I know it may seem like it sometimes. See, I really, in, in here in the VC, just like in life, I don't really give a shit what anybody thinks about me. You know, I, I try to, to uh, what, which show, um, oh, God, Willie. I don't know. There was a lot of people going off on, and something about, like, there was a lot of drama. It was a drama-infused show, okay, where it was like he, sh he said, she said, I know, I'm being very vague right now, and it's not, inten it's not intentional. Uh, you're trying to bury that live stream <laughs> too late. No, I mean, uh, what? Um, but, you know, I mean, God. See, I'm just saying, okay, this is why I, I have remained neutral all this time. I'm not going to side with any camp. I've had people go off and go, why are you on Joe's show? Because I enjoy it. Why am I on Rachel's show from time to time? Because I like to be the voice of reason. We're one of the few that are on that damn channel. And I don't go up all the time. As you guys maybe notice, I go once, maybe every, what? month, maybe every other month, because that's about all I can personally have for time-wise. It's funny. I give it all that. It's, all right, listen, let's, let's, all, let's all throw this on the table, shall we? We wouldn't be watching these shows if there wasn't any drama, right? Maybe that's actually one of the reasons why I don't have a lot of subscribers, and that's okay, I guess. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna boo-hoo about it or whatever. It just is what it is. It's called cancer culture in the BC. It's actually a, a good episode. That's it. I think. I'm sorry. Parody the Richard Ghost. Wait, would you sit and 
Well, actually, maybe I didn't see that one. I think I didn't see that. Now I'm going to have to look. I'll have to. I'll have to. I'll have to uh, look at that. Don't don't bury it yet. I gotta have my when I when I have my coffee and my eggs later. I gotta have something to watch. So you are the one I'm gonna be watching today, Willie. <clears throat> Not singling you out, just stating, okay? But yeah. So I mean, and, and he says correct, and that's true. Uh, ever since we've done these live streams, and I don't mean just me, but the VC itself for the last what capability I think's been around for three years now. Um, I don't know. Well, oh God, now being a diplomat would be real tough. I, I'm not a fence sitter. Okay. Um, there, is, there has been times that I have, you know, I'm not wishy washy. I'm not. I remember one time Mazzy got drunk. Uh, I cannot remember what episode, so forgive me, but he was so happy. He was really, really drunk and he threw out a joke about what was it that I, I called him out on it in the peanut gallery. I said, hey, that's not funny. And uh, it's about something about uh, Jesus went to a bar with, 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 with three nails. I'm like, oh, no, you don't. No, 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 no. Uh, that's the only time I think I've ever gone off and gone, listen, okay, knock it off. You know, that's, that's the only time I think out of three years, it's not pretty bad. And, you know, um, I don't know what to think about Maslow, to be honest with you. I like him better than Rob the Wax. <laughs> not saying that I have an issue with Rob. It's just I can only handle small portions of Rob, and Rob knows that, too. Truth is, Trump has brought more viewers to my channel. It makes your content more relatable, to be honest. Yeah, I guess so, but uh, here's the thing. Um... Junior high, high school, college. I just was being me, you know. The difference is, is that now I'm middle, middle age me. And, you know, I, I even say this at work. Oh, God, my coworkers sometimes, they either love me or they roll their eyes, right? And I, but I say to the ones I can talk to, I'm like, fuck it. I don't give a shit if anybody likes me here or not. I said, I do my job. I throw out a few laughs for you people. That's about it. Collect my paycheck and get the hell home or go buy more records, which, by the way, I did. I do happen to have some vinyl finds, but we're going to save that for tomorrow, okay? Because, like I said, this was going to be a short broadcast. I got about a couple albums, including an album. Uh, I love my 50s music. I'm sorry. I guess I like lots of genres, but like I would say probably my favorites in the genres is 50s, like 50s rock and rockabilly, of course R&B too, bubblegum music from the late 60s, and uh, hair metal, uh, hair metal slash heavy metal of the 80s, I love all that stuff. Paul, you can understand, I think, I, a good portion of my stories were influenced by, yeah, yeah oh my god, speaking of pro rep, Co you know what? Cody finally got to finish the damn story. I was like, good. Now, I didn't get to see Monday Night Raw last night, so no spoilers. I, I, I got home late, and I wasn't. I didn't see it yet. I know Rock was on last night in, in front of Cody, so I don't know what that's going to be. But I'm glad that Cody got the damn belt. Okay? The thing that made me laugh, and I'm sorry, I'm spitting spoilers out for anybody who hasn't seen WrestleMania, is the one thing that made me laugh Okay, so CM Punk on commentary for the Seth Rollins Drew McIntyre match. Drew beats Seth. I knew that was coming, okay? But my co worker got this one right. He said, he goes, Paul, and he said this the day before. He goes, Paul, I bet you I know what's going to happen. And I said, What? He goes, Drew's going to beat Seth. Drew will have the belt for a little bit. Damian Priest cashes in in the Money in the Bank briefcase and beats the shit out of Drew McIntyre and gets the title. And that's exactly what the hell happened. Drew, Drew only had the title for five minutes thanks to CM Punk and Damian Priest. <laughs> I love that shit. I think it's too funny. I know, good for Cody, right? I love Cody. I don't know what it is about him. Um, you know, and I'll say this. I think he's the he's the most likable of all the roads. Honestly, I didn't mind Dusty, but I can only handle so much of Dusty back in the day. Okay, and I'm like, all right, fine. And then Gold Dust. Okay, when he started the Gold Dust character, Dustin. Okay, 
I'm like, all right, this is interesting. But then even he said in interviews that w, the, the people behind the scenes and Vince, they wanted him to to amplify the um, the sexuality of it. And I'm going, you know, and, and, and I know WWF was never a kid's show. Well, it used to be back in the day. You stopped watching wrestling altogether this year. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. I came really close to that. It, truth, I said this, that if Roman won again, I was going to stop. Because I'm like, that's bullshit, okay? I understand that they were maybe going to try it. I'm like, even I think the rest of them went off and they're like, no, nah, we'd be pushing it. We'd lose a lot of viewers if we let them win again. Uh, to top that off, uh, this part's no secret. Roman's got leukemia. He's been fighting that thing for quite a while. And uh, from what I heard, at least he's taking a break. He was thinking of retiring, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think he just needed a break. I have a feeling he's going to come back and make some vengeance later. He's certainly, exactly. And that's why I'm glad. Okay, I think Vince is out of there completely. I hope so. If he was smart, he'll never come back. Do, do I have to thank Vince? Yes, for the early days. And, and, and some of the things that he contributed to wrestling there is one thing that I did not like, uh, and that is the killing of the territories. I liked watching many, many different territories. When I grew up in the early 80s, before WWF ate all the rest of the territories except WCW up, I could watch WWF, WCW, WCCW. Uh, there was two different ones, uh, AWA, uh, which would play in Chicago once in a while. Um, WCW, uh, which was Windy City Wrestling before they had to change the name. I had a lot of options back then, and it was fun. Hi, James. How you doing? Uh, GM Paul waking to the good morning. Goodbye. Well, yeah, hey, John, how's it going? It was time for Cody. To, I know, right? I'm telling you now. Now, uh, thanks again. Okay, now this much I know. Thanks, Mark. Thanks again to CM Punk from last night, who. Uh, there was a fatal four-way. I know this much. And uh, even though uh, McIntyre get, threw the Claymore kick at Uso, Uso managed to recover. But CM Punk held, his, held McIntyre's foot. Uso nails McIntyre. And now Uso's the number one contender for the belt. Um, does he deserve it? I don't know. I like Jay. I always liked Jay, even when he was in the bloodline. You know, out of all honesty, I thought he was going to turn. I, I thought him and Rollins were going to turn at WrestleMania. I was wrong, and I'm glad I was. And Seth, he's going to be gone for a while, too, due to health things. So, what the heck. Yeah, I know. They couldn't survive in today's economy. And that's a shame, too. Now, now i got to say this. Um, we, had two in, we had two independent, uh, no, excuse me, three independent wrestling companies um, within an hour's drive here, and so yeah, I I, I got I have such fun. Uh, I'd say probably unfortunately the smallest one of them all is called Diamond State Wrestling. They, I I really kind of root for them to get bigger, but I don't know what's going on. They like the last show that I went to, they only had about twenty five people, and I'm going, you know, how are you guys surviving? And it was, and it's always in the same place, which is in a, which is in a back, back area of a soccer, big soccer clinic place. So, but I still root for them. I love them. I think they're great. I think it's entertaining. And then Ozark Mountain Wrestling, which is just down the street. They do the matches five, you know, five minutes from here. I'm taking my son and my grandson, Ethan, he's six, and uh, we're going to go next month. Um, Aftershock is the one for Ozark Mountain Wrestling. They're, so Ivan Warsaw, that used to be in WWE NXT, he's got the heavyweight belt right now. And there's a guy coming from South Arkansas. He has the OI, OIMV belt. He's had, so it's champion versus champion. This possibly could be some type of a unification match. I don't know. Um... 
but it, it looks good. And Dante, Dante Smiley is this guy's name. Dante looks like a badass. I'll tell you that right now. And uh, Dante, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. And I already heard that he may have some movie offers, potential movie offers lying on the table. So you could be right. But speaking of AEW, Dante was on a couple dark matches for uh, AEW in 2020, 2021. Hi, Martin. How you doing? Uh, yeah, after he beats up CM Punk and Priest, that'd be funny. Now, I don't know. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people can't stand CM Punk, but I like him. I like CM Punk. I know he can be a whiny little bastard. I understand that. <sighs> but uh, I don't know. I, I got to see him when he was nothing. Well, almost nothing. He was... He, he was on a card in Chicago, a smaller Ring of Honor. This was before Ring of Honor got melded with AEW, mind you. So Ring of Honor, I got to see CM Punk wrestle once in a smaller place. I think maybe 100, 200 people showed up that night. And I think that was pretty damn cool. They, I love seeing these people before they get big. Now, I've seen Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels. Uh, he was in, uh, what, TNA, uh, ECW, uh, the WWF version of ECW, and somewhere else. But I got to see Christopher Daniels when he was starting out. Um, who the hell was the other one? Was it, was it Mr. Anderson? I think it was Mr. Anderson, too, before he got to TNA and all the other ones. He came through our thing, too, and, and, uh. Wrestled around. Now we do have a guy uh, that wrestles for Diamond State, and he also wrestles for Mid States Wrestling, which is out of Harrison, Arkansas, KKK Central, unfortunately. But and that gentleman's name is Luke Langley. Now Luke Langley, he'd always go like this and go, everybody. Luke Langley actually got on AEW TV for a six-man tag match about a few weeks back. Now, I can't wait to meet Luke again and go, hey, even though you guys were on the losing end, in fact, Luke was the one that got pinned. Uh, oh God, who the hell was it? It was the acclaimed. The acclaimed and somebody else uh, pinned him. And I was just like, congrats for being on the damn television, man. That's great. It's like your next step. And then there was a female wrestler that um, she it was through um, Diamond State and, uh, or excuse me, Crown Professional and mid-states and uh, her name's judy azul she's another one to look out for i i see her going into uh either aew or wwe seriously but she was on tv uh two months ago for ring of honor she showed up and uh, of course she got beat but she showed some impressive moves so I think I think there's going to be some really cool ones coming. We also have over in mid states uh, in Harrison, and I hope she comes out here. I thought she was going to come out when uh, Jimmy Mouth of the South Heart was in Siloam, but no, she didn't show up to that one. But Miranda Gordy, yeah, we're talking Terry Gordy, Freebirds Terry Gordy, daughter wrestles. And she's pretty damn good. I'm going to tell you that right now. And um, I don't, I don't see her for very long being here. I, I think she will be kicked up to one of the top two, or or NWA, uh, NWA. I don't know. Uh, sorry, Billy Corgan, but I think that um, unless you make some dramatic changes, even though, sure, they've got a what is it, a uh, streaming deal on. Uh, CW, is it? Which uh, I haven't seen any of that except, go figure, this made me laugh that uh, this was within the last month. The, uh, the Rock and Roll Express, of all people, got the tag team titles. I'm like, what? This is 2024. How the hell? So I don't know if they got to keep them or how long they lasted, but yeah, they got... They got to say they were tag team champions in 24. That's strange. I know. I'm sorry. I'm talking about wrestling a lot here, right? Instead of music. I don't really have a lot of music to uh, to bring up about, although we'll, we'll dedicate this mo short morning broadcast to C.J. Snare, ladies and gentlemen. 
lead singer, former, well, former now, he's gone, of Firehouse. You know, I liked Fair at Firehouse. I still like Baby Don't Treat Me Bad. I'll crank that sucker up. Nobody really plays that damn thing on the radio anymore. We used to have a kick-ass 90s show that would show up on, on the X uh, at lunchtime. They would, uh, it was, I can't remember what the hell they called Well, I think they just called it the X lunch, and it was all 90s. Whether it be all hair metal or whatever. And, um, you know, and of course, hair metal was just about dead by like 92, 93 anyway. But uh, Firehouse was one of the last ones to really kind of crank it out, really. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 80s hair metal has essentially been bad. Yeah, you know, and that's a shame. I went off and I, you know, and I worked for a big jackass big box retailer. And I'm like, I ended up being a finalist for their little radio station internally in their, all their stores. And I came up with an idea, but I don't think, I bet you they'll just poo-poo it, and I'll be like, that figures. But um, even though the stores aren't open at night, after uh, 11, I think there needs to be an overnight show for the overnight associates that are stocking. And uh, this guy, they would let loose. In other words, I'd be like, hey, corporate, leave me alone a little while. It's overnight. It's just going to be the associates. And I would love to play hard rock, heavy metal, hair metal, that kind of stuff. I would love, we got to keep those, got to keep those co-workers going, right? You got to keep them going overnight. Might as well be psycho. Yeah, psycho on overnights. At the blah blah radio, <laughs> blah blah. <clears throat> That'd be funny. The thing is, though, I found out something about my blah blah workplace. The reason why they're able to play what they play all over to all locations is because it's a it's a special uh, package. It is a radio package uh, that uh, it's clearance rights. That's what it is. That's how they're able to get away with the, some of the music they play. I want what's in your coffee. You know what? Uh, you know, I, even I, I'll, I'll tell you what this coffee is today, okay? Um, I I can't stand pumpkin spice. I really, really can't. And I know you're like, well, why the fuck are you drinking the pumpkin spice, psycho? Because it was $2 a bag on clearance. And it was a nice big bag. And I'm like, coffee's coffee. You try to get coffee for $2 in 2024 for a pound and a half. You're not going to do it. And that's like, I bought what they had left. I finished up that holiday blend. I ground that up last uh, two weeks ago. And that took me, as you notice, almost till Easter. And I bought it in, uh, right after Christmas. Punk better watch out with McIntyre. And, oh, <laughs> uh, you're telling me. No, there's not, and that's the problem right there, okay? We used to have, all right, now, I, like I said, when I worked in the guard shack in southern Wisconsin, we had a very cool guy. He would do hair, he would do hair metal, heavy metal, hard rock from 7 p.m. to midnight on, on WLKG, late 96, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And I remember in the early, like the late 90s, early O's, this guy would just crank it. And I would be sitting there going, my God, I haven't heard this in years, this in years, this in years. That's what the hell we need back, okay? Um, a lot of you people don't know. Now, I'm not no metal expert, okay? I'm not, but do I like it? Oh, you betcha. But um, I have an okay 80s metal collection, okay? Vinyl or CD, I do have it. Uh, maybe we'll do some metal-centric episodes down the line. And then maybe they'll be filmed. I'll do them like five or ten at a time, and we can go over those. Zeb, hey, how you doing, Paul? Did you get the new Nectar back? No, because money concerns. I'm not going to lie to you. Money's tight right now. But I want to. Believe you me, I definitely want to. I do the same thing, Paul. I combined clearance pumpkin spice coffee with shitty Maxwell's house. 
Perfect combination. Bad to the last drop. Boop, 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 boop. Hey, Zeb. So, we have streams and YouTube on the net. Hey, William. Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some kick-ass hard rock heavy metal people out here, okay, in YouTube land. <clears throat> and um, whether you like him or, or not, I, I like Patrick, to be honest with you. I like his selection. He will spit out almost anything. And I'll be like, my God, I haven't heard that in a decade. Or blah, blah, blah. You know, insert how long, whatever. And uh, it's just neat, okay? I mean, it's the music we grew up with. Some of us, anyway. Headbangers Ball. Headbangers Ball on MTV. I'm going to tell you something. That might have been a little more corporate. But boy, did I end up catching on to some bands that I wouldn't have known about if it wasn't for that show. And they were pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah, you betcha. And that's the thing. He's got such a selection uh, honest to God, he does, and I'm glad he does. He is one of those, he's one of those uh, specialty shows, honestly, that what's his specialty? That he can just about play any damn thing he wants. That's the specialty. Um, I don't know. I would love to do the same thing, but, you know, he, he obviously kind of has to take his town at the end of the night due to all the music and such. Well, I wish I didn't have to do that. I wish YouTube wouldn't be such a such a pansy about it I, uh, because we're helping to promote these other bands and by promoting those other bands those other fans that are out there watching this stuff will click on YouTube to maybe check out more of a band or Spotify even though I don't like Spotify uh, which will make more money for YouTube and Spotify so YouTube really kind of needs to knock it off I, I really am I, they're not they're not I mean I shouldn't bite the hand that feeds me, considering I have this form because of YouTube, right? But here we are. Jim, how are you? It's been a while. Been a while. Been a while since I saw you. Uh, how is um, St. Louis area? <laughs> right? St. Louis area? I think there's going to be a summer, okay, like, I don't entirely know what's going on, but there's a summer trip, very shorty, like a weekend trip, but I think the farthest, the farthest, we're going to Lebanon, Missouri, uh, if you, you know where that's at, uh, it has to do with the kid, my son, uh, so I might be spending a weekend over in Lebanon, Missouri sometime this summer. I know that much. I, I still want to go to, up to Chicagoland. I hope to. I want to go to Beetle Fest in August uh, to catch up with a few people I've never met except through here and uh, go help my mom with a few things. You know, she doesn't have anybody else up there, really. And, um, to, well, hang with some friends and go, uh, go to a few vinyl places. Unfortunately, a few of them have moved or gone since I left and I was like oh man one of the ones that I thoroughly enjoyed they they killed the half price books outlet in Rockford Illinois man oh man that's sad I ended up finding some really killer 45s out of that thing and I found some that they used to have um, a corner in their outlet that was dollar albums and I found a really killer Buddy Holly one there for a buck and it was in great shape an original, an original from 59, 60, somewhere around there. I'm like, for a buck? I'm like, you betcha. I don't know why this thing's in here, but I will take it. So, uh, yeah, I missed that place. And then uh, another one of the record stores I went to during the wintertime, uh, their, uh, their sprinkler system, something happened and it damn flooded that record store uh like 75 percent i am told was destroyed but they rebuilt it uh thankfully enough i guess the sprinkler system didn't hit the room where all the stereo equipment was so that didn't get damaged but like i said most of the vinyl and uh and uh, some of the 45s they had to be thrown out there was nothing they could have done about it you see because 
they didn't know about the damage for literally almost 24 hours. So imagine 24 hours of a sprinkler going off in your place. Man, oh man, that's a nightmare. <clears throat> St. Louis doing good at Battle Hawks football starting up. Lebanon been there many times. You've been to the new Bucky's North of Spring. No, but I'm planning on it on uh, on my trip. Actually, <clears throat> um, there was a record show uh, in Springfield last Sunday, but I, I feel bad because I, I was hoping to go, but that didn't end up happening. There was a guy who was so nice. Uh, I met him at the, <clears throat> excuse me, I met him at the Carthage show, the Carthage, Missouri, the fourth state show. And he had a copy of Bear Full of Monkeys, which I'm like, like I said, with the exception of the Birds, Bees, Monkeys in Mono from 1968. And yes, I know, Record Store Day's putting it out. <clears throat> Am I going to, yeah, I'm going to try for one. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I guess I could always go for that. What is it? Uh, there's a, there's a mono mini box set or some shit of the first five albums that's out there on CD though. I guess I could just get it there, but I really don't care to. But the only other things in my monkey collection, I'm looking for comps. So, like, I'm looking for Barrel Full of Monkeys, which was the last thing on Cold Gems, January 1971. It was on Dynaflex, too. Go figure. It was one of the first Dynaflex outings uh, for the RCA Incorporated type stuff. Uh, before that, you had Monkey Golden Hits, which you had, to, it was a premium from Post Serial. Um, what the hell was the other thing? Actually, the, oh, that might be it for the, for the official U.S. comps. Uh, of course, I'm also looking for a decent copy of Monkey Mania from 1979 from Australia. You know, the one that sometimes you can find on the import shelves. Anyways, I felt bad, though, because I was trying to go to that show uh, Sunday, and I couldn't get out there. So if the guy said, well, fuck him, he didn't show up and put it back out on the rack, he had it for 60 bucks, And I'm like, that's a little bit much, but, you know, looking on eBay... I guess it really was almost, almost about the right price, and it wasn't. In, it was in hell of a lot better shape than uh, Doug Field's vinyl grotto copy. We survived the four-hour drive past Harrison to see the. You oh, wow! You went all the way. Wow, boy, oh boy. Well, better you, better you, bestie, my executive producer, Donna Joe Cat Lady. Better you. I I actually got to watch it at work. Uh, they gave us glasses, and I'm like, all right. So we saw 95% roughly totality, and that was cool. That was good enough for me. Uh, but uh, so, unfortunately, like I said, I couldn't get, you know, that at Carthage. I didn't have 60 bucks. I would have cut, tried to cut a deal with them, but I didn't have enough money for that either. So uh, hopefully in July... Four state record show coming to Carthage Memorial Hall. Yes. Saturday, July 27, 923. There's going to be, they're claiming 30 plus regional dealers will be there. They had all the tables full last time. Maybe, hopefully, they'll have all the tables full this time. And Donna Joe Cat Lady, maybe somehow, if it's possible, uh, could we maybe make a Tulsa weekend sometime coming up, maybe this summer? And uh, maybe there's a free record show that they like to do in Tulsa. Uh, I think it's downtown, uh, but it's on Sundays, okay? So maybe we somehow could make a, uh, a Tulsa weekend coming up, maybe, out of it. That would be nice. Then I could go meet the, people, the Tulsa crowd and see them. I would like that very, very much because uh, I love meeting amongst the people. That is a fact. I, I, you know, I'll tell you something. I, I, I did bump into like about two or three people uh, that I knew. They didn't know me from the video, from this, uh, from the YouTube channel, though. Turns out that they came all the way from uh, where I live in northwest Arkansas just to go up in Carthage and go look at the record show. I'm like, oh, wow. You know. Hey. So, there. 
Thanks for the heads up on the Carthage show. I have a brother in Joplin, Matt, to check it out. You know what? And if you do, Jim, I'm I sh I'm not going to 100% promise, but I like the last one. I really, really did. Although I learned a lesson. I mean, I did bring X amount of money, but I was kind of budget conscious. I'm hoping maybe to at least bring $100 this time because I think I bought like 50, 60 bucks. I still was happy with my purchases and I didn't spend all my money either, by the way, which was great. I had enough for lunch. But uh, yeah, so July 27th for that. Also, I don't want you guys to forget, upcoming there will be a review of the new Circle album, Revival. That's right, new 2024. Two thirds of the original lineup, but for two tracks, you do get all three members and as an added bonus, Gene Castron is now a member of the circle, and he was the bass player for the Ohio Express. That's right. So you get a little bit of a red rubber ball that's bouncing down at Lulu's. See what I did there? That was horrible. That was a very shitty pun. Hey, there's a half price books that I can go still one I used to go to get clothed, got closed years ago. It's not the same as it used to be when I went to this other one. Well, I bet you I heard they did some changes. I usually find good price CDs at record stores and walk out with more CDs. Sometimes I do too, believe it or not. Yeah, the, cir the, circle, the circle is back. Big Stir Records is the name of the record label. Uh, here's the front. Here's the back. Um, like, it's kind of weird. You can name your price. I put 12 bucks. So I got my CD for $12 and basic USPS uh, mailing. Oh, yeah. No, I, I get you. Um, I really kind of wish that that dude from Wilmington, Illinois, will be there. But something tells me he's not going to. Because, like I said, I talked to him uh, at the show. And he's like, he goes, I hate saying this. He goes, and it was it's always nice to go to these record shows, Paul. He goes, but... Uh, for me to even justify coming back down here, I would I need to make two hundred dollars more in sales in the next couple of hours. And I'm like, but he wasn't the only one to say that. There was probably three different ones that said that. And I know the economy is tough. That's right, red rubber ball and turn down day. Uh, the last thing that those guys ever put out uh, in the original form was the was. For the Minx from the soundtrack, the Minx from 1970. I'm glad they're back. I'm glad all these 60s bands are back. Like I said, you got Circle, you got Nectar, you got Strawberry Alarm Clock, all of them going to hopefully have new albums by the end of the year out in our hot little hands. They still have one often in Collinsville. Are you talking about a record show in Collinsville? That'd be pretty cool. Like um, Collinsville, isn't that like um, north? And then uh, you take one of the off ramps, right? Uh, is it is it is it past Troy, Illinois? Because Troy, I stop in Troy, Illinois, uh, exit eighteen. <laughs> Funny that I still remember that. But uh, for my Jack in the Box fix, I gotta have that when I get across. Me oh, Metro East Record Show, nice. In Collinsville. That is very, very nice. Indeed. I'm glad you guys are all here with me today. And I, like I said, I mean, it looks like this is, I guess it's a good thing that it's partly cloudy now today because that's really what it looks like. Because I know a lot of people would have been pissed off if it was partly cloudy yesterday and nobody would have seen, <laughs> nobody would have seen anything. Uh, that's what I heard. I heard Russellville was talking partly cloudy, but obviously that changed. That changed up pretty quickly for that for that uh, eclipse. <sighs> oh, really? Herman Herman played in Marion, Illinois, huh? P uh, um, Peter Noon and his crowd, huh? I'd like to meet Peter. I I um go figure. I have signed photos, one's personalized to, from Barry Witham, the drummer, because he's got that other version of Hermit's Hermit's that goes out, and uh, he played a county, the Elkhorn County Fair in, 
or excuse me, Walmart County Fair in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. I couldn't go that day because uh, I was working, but my buddy met him after that and got him to sign it. I thought that was awesome. And then I have um, a signed uh, 8x10 from Carl Green, the bass player, courtesy of Charles Rosenay. Yeah, I've purchased some things from him in the past. Yeah, you know what, John? Uh, like I said, that, that four-state one that I went to in uh, early March, that was the first one in at least five years for me. And uh, I'm glad I went. I really am. My buddy Doug Fields from the Vinyl Grotto, he ended up picking up some things too. But uh, he, I mean, I'll admit, okay, it, it, in parts it was a little underwhelming, but then there was other play. It, it's like you had to ferret the stuff out, you know. There was a boot that had vintage audio equipment, uh, which that part was cool, nevertheless. You should sometime, Dark Wizard. They're fun, even if you don't spend a lot. And that's true, too. They had door prizes. And I kind of said at the door, I'm like, well, how much How much does Robbie Krieger or John Densmore eat? Because, you know, I'm on a food budget. No? Okay. How about this one? I threw that. I'm like, I hope it's not a garage door I win because I don't know how I'm getting it home. I know I'm horrible. Just head to nearby record shops around and along in the vicinity. Paul, here is Jersey yesterday. It was a beautiful sunny day, but when the eclipse started the clouds rolled in to quote Pink Floyd, oh, geez, obscured by clouds. Oh, big figures. F figures, too. By the way, I hope uh, everybody in the New York, New Jersey area, uh, I heard you guys got earthquakes last week or whatever. I don't know where over in that area, but hopefully everybody's okay now. Uh, what is it? I know Maine got blasted over the weekend. Jeez, I heard it was crazy up there. So, you know, hopefully the people in Maine are uh, doing all right, too. Yeah, see, I'm on a fixed budget also. I Trust me, uh, I'm kind of frugal. I have to be very frugal with my money. It's really hard to, to be able to put all that money out for a album. Um, I will always try to cut deals first, okay? Because I'm like... <clears throat> I mean, unless they are, unless it says firm on the label, but even then, if it's like, if I'm, if I'm getting, let's say I'm getting three or four albums from the same dude, and I know it says firm, somehow I have a feeling that if we budget it all together in a nice bundle, I can somehow drop that price down even just a little bit, even like 10%. I mean, there was some there was some records that you know. I mean, if I had like five hundred bucks to throw, okay, which I don't. Uh, I mean, they did have an OG promo copy of Dennis Wilson's Pacific Ocean Blue. I would have loved to snag that up. There was another there was another dude, and I never saw another copy of this. Seriously, and I already have Shadows and I Glory LP on Dunwich. Okay, the mono copy. Never saw the stereo copy. Seriously. Never, ever. I didn't even know. I should have known, I guess, but I ne I didn't know there was a stereo copy that existed. This dude had it. And I am just like, where's the prices on these things? Oh, it's it, it's penciled in on the inside of the, of the jacket. He had 120, and I am like, I wanted to blurt out your nuts because you're not, and it wasn't minty. I would say it was between VG plus and near mint, but there was no way in hell I was going to spend $120 on a stereo copy of Shadows of Night Gloria. Supposedly, a 4.0 magnitude quake, the epicenter was somewhere in northern New Jersey. Just as long as it didn't destroy the bada bing. That's all I care about. Wonder how the rest of that Soprano clan's doing. D 
Do you know, I, was, I felt like such a nerd when they played that car commercial a few years ago during the Super Bowl. Where, um, oh God, what's her name? The daughter and the son meet each other, you know, for like coffee. I'm like, holy crap. I said, that's neat. Well, at least they're still social. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, guys, I'm telling you. I know. And I appreciate you guys staying with me for a little bit. I'm about ready to almost wind this down in a minute or two. Besides, I know our, our little drama-fueled other show is uh, coming on <laughs> real soon. But, yeah, hopefully tomorrow I'll have some type of a broadcast and hopefully have this, have this computer finished and up and running. Maybe it'll be a short show, but maybe we can attempt to bring on guests tomorrow. When is it going to be tomorrow? I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, I think maybe we will try for, um, e well, it will be in the evening, I think, but uh, I just don't know when yet. I, I cannot remember if I got to take my kid to work or not. Uh, if that's the case, then I wouldn't be doing it before 9 p.m. Central, uh, but we'll see. I, I don't really care. Six one way, half dozen the other, but we'll do it. And uh, unless I decide to do it in the middle of the afternoon, that's the other thing. So what am I doing around early today? Well, you know what? I, I just, Jim, here's the thing. On Tuesday mornings, Mayo does not do a show on Tuesday mornings. And I did blurt out about a few weeks back that I said, well, you know what? Maybe I'll come on once in a while. I'm not going to do it every Tuesday morning. But I thought I'd come on once in a while just to have like a little bit of a breakfast chitty chat uh, for about an hour, which is about almost where we're getting to. And, uh, and, you know, just basically say good morning to everybody and hope we have a better day. And uh, what a better way uh, to start out than with the Mighty Psycho, your choice of hot beverage or cold beverage if you already were on third shift and you're having a beer and stuff like that. And I uh, figure why not, right? That's right. Why not? Um, Saturday, I'm planning on going... I'm going to be in South Central Missouri uh, in the Monet Cassville area. I will be there visiting my son. I get to cross fingers. I get to meet my brand new 10th grandchild. Yes, Charlotte, the one that was in the hospital a few weeks back. And, uh, and I'm like, I'll be so happy to see that little one along with my other little Adeline, they're so adorable, those two. But hopefully we'll go questing for vinyl and other treasures in the Monet Cassville area on Saturday. Glad you did. Listen, see, and thanks. I'm glad that you guys do. I know you guys have got better things you guys could be watching. And uh, yeah, good news all the way around on that, Glenn, I'll tell you. I'm going to reach out to my kid tomorrow just to make sure. There's going to be this new place that I've never been to. They do, I'm told they do a decent weekend breakfast buffet. And I like breakfast buffets. I'll tell you that right now. Have I gained, unfortunately, some of the weight I lost? Yeah, I did. I'm ashamed of myself a little bit. But summer's coming, and hopefully I can work some of that off. You know, my, my 40th class reunion, I almost don't even give a shit about this thing. It's next year, next summer. But for shits and giggles, maybe I ought to just go. I was very disappointed in my 30. My, was it 30? Yeah, it was the 30th. I was very, the 20th was beautiful. It was great. It was a weekend that oh, I will always remember. Hey, I know you like the dark side of the ring. Have you been keeping up with them? Okay, so... Um, I don't have cable, but I've seen a couple episodes. I saw, I saw the Terry Gordy episode. That one was good. Miranda was on that too. We were talking about her earlier. Um, she wrestles down here in Harrison area, Harrison, Harrison, Arkansas, Springfield, Springfield, Missouri. She wrestles around in there too. Uh, I think they're going to be in Crane, Missouri, wherever the hell that's at, to do a fundraiser. I think she's going to be at that one, too, uh, for Mid-States Wrestling. Just go look them up, uh, and you can get your... They, they like to go to places like uh, 
um, oh shit. Jefferson, they'll go to Jefferson City. They'll go uh, to a few other places, like in the central Missouri area. Yeah, you're getting right. Breakfast buffets are great, especially for the fat guy. Just caught the Harley race one. You know, I started watching it. I'm not, I'm, uh, yeah, see, I would have loved to have met Harley, honestly. I know Harley had his own wrestling school. He started, he had a wrestling school in Eldon, wherever Eldon is in that state. Because I, I heard that's where he grew up, or pretty much after he really got out of wrestling, he lived in Eldon, Missouri. He was a little more easily approachable back then. And then he moved to some suburb south of St. Louis uh, uh, to finish up before he died. Uh, Vice Network. Vice uh, is where Dark Side is on. You met him in Eldon? Oh, God. Was he cool? Was Harley cool? I, I, I hope so. I would have loved to have met Harley. I basically remember him from the 80s and the 90s. If I remember correctly, didn't Harley um, manage Vader for a while? It might have been one of the last things I remember ever seeing of Harley anyway. That's it. Troy, Missouri. Thank you. That's what I was trying. Oh, God. Really? Shit. Well, that's what decades and decades will do to you in that business. All right. Listen. Thanks for spending time with me this morning. I really do love you guys. I've got the best damn audience in the YouTube VC. That's right. I don't care what anybody else says. You managed. Yeah, you to, to just you, you guys that made the show. Right. That's right. Oh boy, that's right. Yeah. Have a great one all indeed. Thanks a bunch. Like I said, crisscross applesauce, opening for the show tomorrow. It will be afternoon or evening. I have not determined when. Thank you very much, Glenn, Jim, everybody, John, Willie, et cetera, et cetera. Take care. God bless. Rock on. Always powered by coffee each and every time. That is your mighty psycho.